Sometimes it's not an individual that needs healing, but an entire society, local or global. That's where the art of memorial making comes in. Since 9-11, many memorials have been created in and for New Jersey, each with its own story. The designs for Empty Sky, the New Jersey September 11, 2001 memorial, were recently put on display at the galleries at 225 West State Street in Trenton. Construction has already begun at Liberty State Park for Empty Sky, and this exhibit provided a long-awaited preview of the monument that will stand across the Hudson River from ground zero. Empty Sky honors both the memory of those lost and the special place that they call home, New Jersey. The memorial is dedicated to New Jersey's innocent loved ones who were violently and senselessly murdered on September 11, 2001. This memorial reflects the legacy of their magnificent lives and that their unfulfilled dreams and hopes may result in a better future for our society. Our competition was open and the winner turns out to be an internationally uh, recognized architect. It could have easily have been an unknown architect, uh, but it was really the design of Empty Sky and the thinking and the meditative quality behind it, the healing quality of it, that made the families want to have that design for their memorial, for the state's memorial. Each one of us uh, has put a lot of compassion into this memorial. And it is uh, not only a monument to honor the memory of the loved ones that we lost from the state of New Jersey, but it also reconnects New Jersey to the empty sky of ground zero. The healing aspect to a monument or memorial is uh, something that has e emerged over the last several years. There are many components to a memorial in today's thinking than besides just a statue or, or structure. There, there needs to be a, a depth of thinking so that the future generations can learn more about these historical events. Cultures from around the world memorialize events and death and victory, for that matter, and life in various types of monuments and memorials. New Jersey lost 743 individuals in New York, Shanksville, and in Washington, D.C. When you are standing within the two stainless steel walls that contains the etched names of the 743 victims, the memorial directs your vision to the site where this happened, where the, where the uh, people lost their lives on September 11, 2001, in New York City. When the memorial at Ground Zero is completed, you'll be where the event happened. What's different about this memorial is that you see the sight lines to where the Twin Towers once stood. Bedminster artist Sassona Norton was chosen to design a memorial for the Montgomery County Courthouse in Pennsylvania. We met with her at an exhibition of her work at the Morris Museum. Healing is a very strong word. Um, I'm sure there is an element of healing that we all want to have, but healing is a slow process. And I don't know that you make the memorial in order to heal. What you want to do, I think, you want to transform the memorial to a level where there is some solace, that there is a lesson that is learned, that people can remember and go about building a future because a future that does not contain lessons of the past, healing or not, is not going to exist. You become richer because of the pain. You wish that the pain didn't exist. You wish that we all had life that had no sorrow, that had no tragedies, that had no sadness. But if you go through it, you hope to rise out of it stronger to say that you have gone through fire and that you survived. The stipulation was that there was an I-beam that was retrieved from the North Tower of the World Trade Center and it must be used in the memorial. And I don't know why and how but I saw this pair of hands raising the memorial immediately. I didn't have to think of different options. This was it. It had to celebrate 
or commemorate not just the people who were killed, but also all the first responders, the police officers, the firefighters, the medics, everybody who volunteered, everybody who rushed, everybody who did anything to save lives. So around the periphery of the disc, there's a ring of, of words that say, September 11, 2001, the many who were killed, the many who fought to save others, memories never die. The object is no longer an object. It becomes a representative of what took place. So you look at something that is no longer the something, so to speak, but it's a reflection of the event. And therefore, it's no longer inanimate. Everybody that comes back from the memorial tells me that they have tears in their eyes. That's, I think, is every artist dreams to have. You communicate not through what you say, but through what you do. And if what you do creates this kind of emotional response, then that's what you want. Sculptor Seward Johnson did not choose to make a 9-11 memorial. In his case, the memorial chose him. One month after 9-11, the rescue workers, I mean, it was just so awful down there. When they were saying how much double check meant to them, uh, to me, uh, I mean, I've been told all the stories that someone tried to rescue him, uh, thinking he was a man in shock and they got their only smile of the day. I mean, he, he wasn't a memorial, he was there before, <laughs> and, uh, but he became it. And so what could be more meaningful than the very act of using him as a memorial? They made him a memorial, not me. It was uh, the public's grief or, that was expressed there and uh, shock and, and camaraderie and, and uh, all the things I represented. I ended up collecting all those things and then I picked up the piece and I got another casting of it and I molded all of those messages of love and everything. And I know that their act of putting the, these crucifixes, teddy bears and things like that on them were uh, acts of their expressing their own humanity and so that's healing so that's <laughs> that's why I think it does it.